Joining me now is NBC's Josh Letterman following this for us in London. So, Josh, this incident has started a whole new round of outrage around the world, spotlighting the issue of civilians and particularly aid workers being killed in Gaza. What else can you tell us about what happened? Well, Garrett, as you can imagine, the global condemnation is now pouring in from all over the world, from uh, parts of the Arab world, where even countries like Jordan that have made peace with Israel are calling this a war crime, to, of course, the countries that lost their own citizens in this tragedy, the U.S., the U.K., Australia, and Poland. Those governments now have to explain to grieving families how it is that a country, Israel, that they have largely stood behind, went and killed one of their own citizens who was simply trying to bring food to people who are on the verge of famine. All of those countries have now demanded an immediate explanation and investigation from Israel here in the U.K. Uh, the government has summoned the Israeli ambassador, the U.S. also expressing concern. But I think the other big concern here right now, Garrett, is how is this going to hamper those humanitarian efforts going forward? Obviously, uh, World Central Kitchen has paused operations in Gaza. I've heard this morning from two Two other organizations doing work on the ground in Gaza who say they also feel like it's too dangerous right now for them to continue with their humanitarian relief efforts. The UAE uh, has said the same thing. And so suffice it to say, uh, this is the very last thing that civilians in the Gaza Strip needed right now, Garrett. Yeah, absolutely. And Josh, one of the victims killed, Zomi Francon, may be familiar to our viewers. She spoke with Chris Jansing last September about World Central Kitchen's aid efforts, in that case following the earthquake in Morocco. What no more do we know about her specifically? Yeah, this is a situation that really hits home for our viewers and our uh, MSNBC family. Uh, she had been on the ground in Gaza for some time uh, as part of World Central Kitchen's efforts uh, to bring not only food, but also clean water to individuals in need there. Uh, and when she spoke to us last year uh, during that earthquake in Morocco, she really described how she saw the mission that she was carrying out, not just about bringing food and water, but also also about restoring dignity and hope. Take a listen. World Central Kitchen are laser focused at reaching communities at the margins. Um, we are laser focused on overcoming every obstacle, every challenge uh, to be able to serve uh, hope and dignity uh, in the form of fresh meals um, and fresh drinking water. And Garrett, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese of Australia is among those who are mourning uh, Zami's death. He says that she was a person who had really made a career out of going to some of the most dangerous places on earth simply to try to help people in need. People she didn't even know. Uh, the Australian government now among those uh, that are demanding answers from the Israeli government, Garrett. All right, Josh Letterman for us in London starting off. Josh, thank you. I want to bring in now the International Rescue Committee's Senior Vice President for Crisis, Response, Recovery and Development, Kieran Donnelly. Uh, Kieran, thank you for being with us here. Josh was just talking about how much more dangerous this makes uh, work for aid workers in Gaza now. Talk to me about your reaction here and what you think this will do to affect the ongoing aid efforts inside the Gaza Strip. So the first thing to be said is this is a horrible tragedy for the families of those affected and our hearts and condolences go out to them and to the World Central Kitchen staff who are grieving today. This incident um, it is not an isolated incident. Of course, it comes against a backdrop. We have to recognize the context of a systematic uh, pattern of attacks against aid work, aid agencies, aid facilities, medical facilities in Gaza, over 200 aid workers um, killed predominantly UN staff, but also uh, from the NGO community, including this latest uh, incident. Uh, and of course, that takes place against the even wider context of uh, over 32,000 Palestinians having been killed, 1.1 million uh, living in famine conditions today, over half the population. The aid effort is currently struggling uh, to reach those most in need, and we're hampered by two things. We're hampered by uh, the blockages of aid um, getting into Gaza, uh, the restrictions on, on the flow of aid and the nature of aid that's being delivered, and by the security situation, by the conduct of the war, which makes it very dangerous, not just for aid agencies to operate and limits our ability to be able to reach those in need, um, but also makes it incredibly dangerous for people to be able to access our services. Um, this incident is uh, one of uh, one incident, the latest incident in a pattern of attacks um, that are just going to continue hampering uh, the ability of aid organizations, NGOs and UN alike to be able to reach Palestinians who need our support. 
Uh, World Central Kitchen in particular had been working very hard to set up the logistics to bring in aid by sea. I think they had really just gotten started on that. How big of a player were they on the ground of feeding hungry people in Gaza? And what does this mean for addressing the widespread famine conditions there? World Central Kitchen has been an important part of bringing food to people in Gaza. Um, the uh, efforts to bring food in by sea, well, obviously any uh, any any delivery of aid in the de terrible conditions on the ground is welcome and is important. It's also, I think, really important to be clear that maritime deliveries and uh, airdrops that we've seen in recent weeks um, can't be a substitute for reopening the land borders in order to get the volumes of aid to people who need it in the timeframes needed to avert an even further worsening of what's already a catastrophic situation for people on the ground. Um, we need to open up land borders and allow those trucks that are queued up at Rafa and elsewhere uh, to be able to get in. And then we need uh, a ceasefire on the ground in order to provide a sufficient safety and security for aid agencies to operate. And, and as I said, for people to be able to access aid, if you think about uh, the risks that people are facing just to be able to get to distributions, to be able to get to hospitals um, as well. Uh, I don't know if you heard the comment from uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu that I read at the start here, but, you know, he talks about the fact that this is basically the kind of thing, however unfortunate, that happens in war, his argument. Uh, so if that's the case, if you're not going to see a ceasefire, what can be done in the context of a hot war on the ground to better protect aid workers who, thank God, will continue doing this important work uh, regardless of the situation there? There have been over 200 aid workers and over 300 medical staff killed in Gaza in the last several months of war. Um, there is no way to conduct a war in, to, in a context like Gaza uh, that is compatible with uh, the requirements of international humanitarian law. Um, so quite simply, uh, the only viable way to protect Palestinians in the first instance, but also to protect aid agencies and those serving them, um, is to bring about an end to the ceasefire. Also the only way to bring about a release of the hostages, stop fighting um, and, and allow the aid efforts to scale up, allow talks to proceed. Um, that's really the only viable way forward from our perspective. All right, Kieran Donnelly from the International Rescue Committee. We have to leave it there. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.